there's a great strength, a great experience that you can have in church as a part of a church and interconnected and entwined with the body of believers that is magnificent and wonderful but it also has the potential to cause you sometimes to stay in a box of your own making even the same way that sometimes when you're in a crowd how easy it is for a crowd to turn into a mob sometimes that happens in the Christian world in worship or in enthusiasm or in emotion or sometimes in teaching when somebody's driving home a point and they just keep iterating reiterating and shoving it and pushing it and it gets people worked up and then you feel like you're kind of like swept up into the moment and you get carried away into doing things you might not have said or done otherwise be careful of that because you see I enjoy and love the body of believers I like what God is doing in the entire Christendom because I look at the letters to seven churches and I see each one of the churches had some major issues and I can't fix them but God can I can't straighten them out by just sharing with them what you know the Lord said or whatever a word might be but I can see in them certain aspects of me in each one of them that make me realize that I have the potential to fall in the same places that they may have fallen so I need to spend that quality time not just in the church but alone with God I need to be removed from all the input that I get from television from computers from technology from the world around me and get to that quiet time that peaceful person that so satisfying cold drink of water that that I know who my God is that Jesus sitting here with me still and quiet is the reality of my relationship with him and when I get distant from that it's gets anxious or gets uncomfortable or gets kind of not peaceful and then I know somehow I've gotten off into somebody else's faith and not my own because my Lord my Jesus is merciful to me because I stumble and fall my Jesus is forgiving because he shares with me his love from the Father my Jesus introduces me to a personal relationship with God my Father that's intimate and real that doesn't push me away when I fall down but picks me up and holds me when I'm needing him. and it's not a question of whether I become perfect because I know that God will perfect me it's not a question of taking grace to an extreme and continuing to sin it's not any of those stupid things that people get carried away with. it's rather the fact that I love Jesus and I love him being here with me and I wouldn't give that up for the sake of church people places things or any other circumstance around me so I love what he's done in me and I love as he works through me but I care more for knowing him than I do in doing things because I don't want to just be someone who shared in his name and was cast away but rather I'd like to be found with him in him and knowing him to the day that he comes and meets me face to face and I kiss him and I love him because it is a man love divine not a gay celebration of some deviation but a man love of one man loving another man with all his heart soul mind and strength and being and knowing that he is not only the son of man but the son of God in God calling the richest gift Jesus thou didst come that we might have life and have it more abundantly life spiritual mental physical abundant life joyous life powerful life yes these I came to give you think you not my heart was sad that so few would accept that gracious gift do you think that earth's richest choicest gift held out free to all and no man to care to stretch out a hand to take it is that possible that my gift could be so rejected that the riches of heaven has to be offered and that the precious gift of life abundant life man turns away from and rejects and will have none of let it not be true of you hasten to take unto yourself 
the person I am and be always mindful that who I am is what I have done for you as well as living in you to accomplish my purpose through you. Because not only do I love you, but my Father does too. You know, when Jesus shared that, he came to introduce and to reintroduce us to his Father. I think the world was shocked because I really do think that today, even though we have the Word of God, today, even though we study the Scriptures and we know the volume of the book, somehow we still think of God our Father as being a wrathful God of judgment and that he's going to destroy everything in sight and that we get this picture of him wanting or somehow enjoying doing it. And the reality is, is I think God grieves over that great tribulation that is to come where he pours out his wrath upon mankind because I believe that the God of love, that we are told that God is love, that because God is love, he is beyond the tenderest moments we can imagine and beyond any comprehension of the feelings that we think we have because we only taste in part, but he's the fullness thereof. So I don't see God my Father in quite the same way that maybe you do, but I pray today you would find that he's not just long-suffering, that he's merciful and he is tender and that in a still small voice he will speak to you because he doesn't want to speak to you in a loud thundering circumstance that causes devastation but he would rather cause salvation to come to you today in your circumstances as you walk with him every day learning that being alone with God might be the best thing you could do today and then go on to church and go on to ministry or go on to your family or go on to your fellowship or your friends or your neighbors or whatever it is that God has placed you in. But never forget that Jesus is always, forever, with you if you'll just make yourself aware to him that you want to know him personally and intimately as deeply as he knew the Father because then he'll introduce you to someone that you may not know of and you may only think you understand and that is our Father who art in heaven and glorious and hallowed is his name his kingdom is coming his will is being done on earth as it is being accomplished in heaven this is the day that he has made and he has given us all that we need for today he has provided for us our daily bread and he has caused us not to be led into temptation, for he tempts no man. But he is causing us to be directed unto salvation. For we choose to listen, he will lead us and guide us, as he has said. But he will, as he has promised, as we listen and heed his call, as we do the things he said, deliver us from all evil. Because we are, as we follow him, being brought into his kingdom and his glory forever and ever.